May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put benefit in the talk and run the, the words that will be of benefit to myself and to the listeners. Uh, listen with the intention, listen very carefully, okay? Because we're going to get somewhat, we're going to get quite deep. Um, I want to get to the root uh, of Tawheed today. As you all know, La ilaha illallah miftahul jannah. La ilaha illallah. And if you can grab a pen and paper and take notes, um, that can prove helpful for you as well, inshallah. La ilaha illallah, to what we call tawheed, is you know negation and affirmation. But it's the key to paradise. It's the key. So a proper understanding for tawheed has to be in place. Uh, unfortunately, I feel nowadays that it's very simplistic. It's kind of like, you know, most people tell you to worship one God and not to associate any partners with him. To worship la ilaha illallah, there is only one, you know, true God. And this is true, you know, this statement. But on a practical level, you know, what does it mean? And that's what I'm going to try and tackle today. So, um, inshallah, I have somewhat of a summary uh, that I wrote for my uh, revision. So I'm going to share uh, directly from the notes that are going to be in the second edition of the book that I'm going to be launching soon with an audio version as well of the book. So again, I'm very excited. Um, and let's get started. So Tawheed, la ilaha illallah, is the key to paradise, clear. So in order to ten enter paradise, you can't be associating partners with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forgive shirk. So it's important to understand what we mean by shirk. Because he doesn't forgive that, but he will forgive any and everything else if he wills, to whomever he wills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive. He's the most forgiving. But where he draws the line is shirk. But it can't be really that simplistic. I mean, the majority of Muslims, who do you know that's a true Muslim? that worships other than Allah in, in the sense that, you know, you know they, they have maybe a statue in their home and they ask the statue or whatever it may be. And I know I'm being quite simplistic, but there has to be something deeper here because ultimately there is something that blocks true Tawheed, listen carefully, that blocks true Tawheed from entering into the heart. This blocker, write these down, this blocker is being affected by or attached to the means or created realm of this world. So the khalq, the outwardly manifest, the phenomena of this world is God's creation. Allah created it and he created it for a reason and we'll get to it. But if you're affected by or attached to the means. What do I mean by means? You know, anything that is seemingly, you know, may have some sort of benefit or harm to you, like, you know, money, um, anything that is a, a means or a key to something else, like, for example, you know, uh, uh, status is, is a means to maybe get things done, money is a means to uh, fulfill your needs, maybe solve your problems. That's what it seems like. So, the blocker, the main blocker of Tawheed is being, one, affected by, or two, attached to the means or the created realm. And when we say, or what we mean by attached to is that the heart is drawn towards these things. It's, a, it's attached to these things because it feels that these things can have some sort of intrinsic cause and effect in them. So they can, you know, change your circumstances somehow, you know, as if they have their own power to do, in a sense, to get things done. So if you want to get things done, if you have money, uh, if I have a million dollars, I can solve all my problems. You know, that's a form of shirk. But so if you're affected by or attached to the means or the created realm, this is a problem because this is really uh, what develops, uh, what gives birth to Shirk. So without the nur, the light of Tawheed, you are going to develop shirk. And shirk in the Arabic you know, language, it's, it's like from like sharaka or a type of partnership with God. So it's like, you know, God can do things, but with the aid of other things. 
It's kind of like God can take care of my problems, but he needs money to do so. God can cure me, but he needs medicine to do so. God can fulfill, satiate my hunger, but he needs food to do so. So he's like, and, and this is the world of asbab, of means. So we have to utilize these means in order to fulfill our needs and solve our problems. And this, unfortunately, my respected brothers and sisters, is a form of subtle shirk. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Unfortunately, the majority of people, they believe not in Allah except with shirk associated with their belief. Okay, so this is God. He's saying the majority of people are practicing shirk. Yeah, so and shirk is a major issue. So we need to address this problem. Now, the means and created realm is not the problem. The means or the created realm is not the problem. It's your relationship with the means that is the problem. So if you are affected by or attached to the means, that is when it's an issue. Don't be too scared because this is, first of all, we've got to break the spell of means. We've got to break the spell of the matrix. So this, what I'm doing right now, imagine you've got all these, the subtle shirk in your heart. Right now, I'm sticking two fingers down your throat in order for you to vomit out all this shirk, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll accomplish that. At least you'll have, you know, uh, an understanding of what that is, inshallah ta'ala. Looking fresh, brother. MashaAllah, jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you fresh as well. Keep us all fresh as well. Barakallah feek. So listen carefully. Again, I've never shared, I've never gone this deep. Please don't cry. We've got heartbreaking kid. We're going to mend your heart, kid. Don't worry, inshallah. By the end of this, inshallah, lesson, you're going to feel mended. So the issue is not the means. It's not the money. The issue is not the money, the education, the power, or the, you know, even the fame that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might test you with. Um, the issue is how you perceive these things and whether you're affected by these things. If you're affected by, and if you're affected by them, naturally you're going to be attached to them. And this is where the issue lies. So means, again, is not the problem. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is going to get a bit matrixy right now, okay? Wherever you turn your face, wherever you perceive, whatever you see, there is the essence of God. There is the essence of God, subhanAllah. Now, here's a question for you. If there is no attachment to creation... So if there's, if, nobody, if there's no creation, then you can't be attached to creation. And if there, you can't be attached to creation and you believe in God, then you're not going to associate partners with God. And if you're not going to associate partners with God, there's no shirk, then there's no problem. There's no heaven and there's no hell. So it, the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created heaven and hell is heaven and hell are a choice. You know, it's a choice. So you have to make the right choices in life to avoid hell and enter into paradise. So if there's no creation, there's no problem to begin with. So the creation is the test. The creation is the test. Now, everywhere we perceive, there is the essence of God. Now, the essence of God, take note, the essence of God is one eternal plus infinite. The essence of God is eternal and infinite. So get this. The mind, the mind is like, think of it as a type of glasses or a virtual reality headset that is placed and it's like it's placed, so to speak, on the ruh. And so when the soul which is what truly sees because, you know, he said, well, the eyes don't really see because, you know, uh, what happens is after death, you know, 
the same eyes are there, but you can no longer see. The ears are there, but the body can no longer hear. Why? Because the soul is removed. And the soul is the command of Allah. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا The ruh is from the Amr of Allah. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ruh. This is all Qur'an. They ask you about the ruh. Tell them, O Muhammad, قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Ruh is from the command of God. It's the breath of God. It's the secret in reality. In every sort of speak, not even in, but that every human being, it's part of our true reality. You're not a physical body, you are the ruh. Okay, the body is born in, in sort of time. So think of this mind as a virtual reality headset, and it's kind of the window for the soul. So the, the soul, the, the window, the soul's window into the created realm. So you kind of like the ruh as part of this test, you're born into this world and there's something called mind. Now mind is not a container. It's that most people, the mind is like where thoughts and, 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 and feelings and seeing and perception uh, are contained. No, mind is thoughts, feelings, and perception. And perception is like seeing, hearing, uh, uh, smelling, tasting, uh, all these things, okay? So now once we've established that thoughts, feelings, seeing, hearing, this is all mind. This is the definition of mind from any like proper uh, psychologist, they'll tell you that. So this mind is like a virtual reality headset because this world is a test. إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ We created this insan to test them. فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا So in order to test them, we gave them the ability to hear and see. And that is mind. So mind is the matrix, but get this. Now, when looking through the, this virtual reality mindset. I'm not going to call it a headset. Let's call it a mindset. So when you put on this mindset, you see... Now Allah is saying, wherever you look, there is God's essence. And God's essence is infinite and eternal. It cannot be contained within time and space. He is the creator of time and space. But when we look, we don't see necessarily eternity or infinity, okay? What we see when we put on this virtual reality mindset that is placed onto the ruh, okay? You see infinity as space. And you see eternity as time. So simply the activation of mind being born into this world Mind, thought activates time, and perception activates space. So you, when you look at the world, you are seeing an illusion. Because if I were to tell you, if I were to give you orange-tinted glasses, and you put them on, and, and there's snow in front of you, no matter how hard you look, the snow will always look orange because you are going to see the world in alignment with the limitations of the device that you are seeing through. It's almost like I would see, uh, you know, if the ruh sees, it sees infinity and eternity, but the minute we place the virtual reality mindset, it's now I see the created realm, I see time. So infinity, that part of our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah that is infinite, is diffracted into space, the 3D dimensional world, okay? And the eternal aspect appears to the limited mind, this virtual reality headset, as time. So this is the space-time continuum, which is dunya, which is this universe. The universe is space-time. So it's very important for you to understand this. Yes, again, we'll do it. The ruh, your true essence, your true being. You wear 
a virtual reality mindset. This virtual reality mindset is mind. Okay, this is the, in a sense, dunya is mind. Because dunya is within the perceived realm. You see, you hear. Allah says, did he not say, he says, you know, he says, I created this insan in Surah Al-Insan, in, in the chapter of the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we created him from this material, you know, sperm, right? Min nutfatin amshajin, the XY chromosome. Nabtalihi to test him. How are you going to test us, Ya Allah? By giving us perception, by creating mind. Because in reality, there is only Allah. Aynama tuwallu wujuhakum fathamma wajhullah. Wherever you look in reality, there is Allah. But I don't see Allah. Why is it that I don't see Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this headset to test us and created an illusion, which means things are not what they appear to be because you are going to see this dunya. Allah did zina. He ornamented it. Zina is like, it's a sense that, in a sense, like things are not what they're, because to, to do, to, to uh, do tazin of something is to kind of, you know, tweak it in a sense. So it's been tweaked. So you're gonna perceive the world in accordance with the limitations of mind. Mind is this virtual reality headset, just like in this dunya, when you go, you know, somewhere where they offer, you know, virtual reality and you put on the virtual reality glasses, you see, a, a, you know, a world, but because you know you're putting on the glasses, you know that's not really there, right? Because you're seeing the world based on the limitations or the software that is uploaded into these glasses and you get, begin to see a layer on top of this world. And if you never take off these glasses, which is, you know, as long as you're in this dunya, there is mind. Because what is mind, really what it is, is ruh is your true essence. When, when, listen carefully, true, ruh is your true essence, okay? When you... Um, when the ruh is placed in, the, when you're born into this world, the ruh in the body becomes, it's called nafs. It's the same thing, but, but now, in a sense, there's this limitation. There's this feeling of choice. In order for there to be choice, uh, seeming causation effects, there has to be time and space. So this virtual reality headset mind is basically um, the, the perception, the tools of perception, which is, in summary, you could call it thoughts, feelings, and perception. And when you look out into this world, when the ruh is, it's kind of like this prism, and when you shine a white light, it's diffracted into multiple colors. So it's like the ruh hits the, this, this virtual reality, it's filtered, this, the eternity and infinity, in a sense, which is the reality, there's only God, there's only Allah in reality. But Allah created this illusion where through the mind, you now, the ruh now is, in a sense, filtered, th through this filter, you now, rather than see in space and time, because the mind cannot grasp, in a sense, the time, you can't capture now, the now, because the now is timeless. The mind, simply by looking at this world, time is created. By thinking, by thinking, time is created. By perceiving, space is created. And hence, space-time, which is this dunya. Okay? And that's the place of this test. So it's not like there isn't really a mountain. There isn't really, you know, when you look around, you say a table and a chair and, you know, this, this ear set and whatnot. They're just vibrations. There's, it, in reality, all there is is Allah. But this mind, 
you know, gives you, it, it, the ruh is kind of like filtered through this mind. So when you look out into this world, فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بصيرا, Allah is saying, now I'm testing you. Be, and what is the test? We have to get to what the test is. So what nur, the nur of tawheed, listen carefully, the nur of tawheed will decrypt. It's the encryption key. It's the key to the encrypted world. So if you have nur, because nur is singular, and darkness is, is always mentioned in the Qur'an most of the time, I believe, in, in the plural sense, because you see space-time as multiplicity. There's subject, you are the object, and there's, this, you're the, there's the subject-object relationship of me and this world. So it feels like there's you perceiving the world, but in the reality, there's only Allah. So uh, the, the, this illusion was created where this nur of tawheed, when it enters into the heart of the human being, he decodes space-time, which is the matrix, which is dunya. Dunya is the matrix because it's not real, okay? It's not what's really happening. Yes, please just pay attention, okay, to the end. Don't rush it, okay? You could always purchase the book, inshallah, and take your time and digest it at your own rate. But listen carefully, because it's going to get deep, okay? Allah says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And ilm is nur. So with the nur of لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, say in the Quran? He says, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ كَانَ مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ زُيِّنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ So there's the word of tazyin. Allah is saying, are you, he, he you know, uh, 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 he strikes a uh, similitude, a method, a metaphor of like, you know, the, uh, are you going to compare a dead person? Because, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The one that has nur, that is in a state of remembrance, Allah is saying that is truly the alive individual. But the one who is in a state of ghafla and is forgetful of Allah and is in a state of this multiplicity can't decode this world for what it truly is. This is like a dead person in the sight of Allah. So it is the nur of iman when you walk, Allah says, فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ is like someone that is dead. So we've given them life. How did they become alive, Ya Allah? وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا We've given him a light. What does he do with this light? يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ you know, He's walking you know, through this world amongst the people with this light. With this light. Is it like the... كَمَنْ كَانَ مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ Is it like the... You know, the, the non-believer who doesn't have the light, who's, in a, who's walking in, this, in these darknesses, he's unaware of the reality of Tawheed, the reality of this world is that this dunya is ultimately an illusion? Are you going to compare? Are you going to equate the two? What are you on about? What are you smoking? <laughs> in a sense, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You know? So it's like, it, it's like what, is, what is the verse? There's another verse that I uh, wanted to share with you. What is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Uh, he says, قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أب... What is he? قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَأْمُرُونِي أَعْبُدُوا أَيُّهَا الْجَاهِلُونَ يعني انتو جننتو? Are you crazy? You want me to worship other than Allah? And the one that is basically doing everything, running everything, control of everything. So it's very important to understand this, this point. So the ilm is nur, ilm is nur. And Allah is saying, fa'lam, no, have awareness in the fact, infuse nur into you know, your perspective because nur or knowledge is the opposite of ignorance. Ignorance is jahil. And ignorance in the Arabic language or in the English language means, listen carefully, ignorance means ignoring the truth. You are in a state of ghafla from the truth. You're in a state of non-remembrance. Okay? So this is ignorance, which is the opposite of ilm, which is nur. And the truth 
ignoring the truth, the truth, the ultimate reality is أَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn, there is the face of God, meaning there is the essence of God, which is one. Allah is Ahad. So this is very important that this is clear, okay? Now, without nur, without the nur of tawheed, you're under the spell of mind, which is dunya. So you're under the spell of dunya. Okay? The majority of people, they're, they're sleeping. They're not awakened to this truth because they don't get, they don't have the proper perspective. They haven't unpacked tawheed. Inshallah, in, and this is one of the ways we unpack Tawheed to help you look at the world appropriately in the correct way so you can decode it. So now when you have knowledge, ilm and nur, you're not ignorant, you're not ignoring the truth, you see the one in the many. So now when you look at the world, you sort of decode it with this understanding of Tawheed. So it's not like the world starts shining all of a sudden. It still appears the same way, but you get it. You understand its meaning. You pierce through the veils of multiplicity to the source, the one behind them, the many, right? Like when Neo is awakened and he sees the code, he sees the source code. So he gets it. So without Noor, you're under the spell of mind, which means you are lost in space time. You're lost, you're in a state of ghafla, you think this is all there is to the world, just, you know, things doing what they're doing and whatnot. So it's very important. I'm going to see if I can uh, stop the option. I'm not sure where to do this. Please do not send me a request to come live until I open it up, inshallah ta'ala, because it's a little bit distracting, inshallah. So hold off on that, the request for live toward, till towards the end, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so now we said that if you're without nur, the nur of tawheed, you're under the spell of mind. So you think this is all there is. You can't decode. You don't have the key to decode, the, the, to decrypt, to unlock this matrix. And the key to unlock this matrix is the nur of la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I said, you're lost in space time because Allah says, Nabtalihi fajalnahu sami'an basira, you failed the test. You don't get it. And Allah has given you the answers to the test. He sent prophets. It's, not, it's an open book exam. So listen carefully. I'm going to give you the cheat sheet pretty much. Okay? So now, the, Allah also says, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيْءِ look, look at the Qur'an, man. When you have this understanding, the verses of the Qur'an, they read so differently. They're so sweet all of a sudden. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ They are, all they're aware of is the outwardly manifest, the phenomena. Oh, he says like atoms and molecules and matter and, you know, the skies and the clouds and the stars. That they're not going beyond these signs. These are all pointers. They're ayat to the one truth. But you need the key to decipher things. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these messengers. And they all came with the same message. Qulu la ilaha illallah. Tuflihu, that if you say, if qawl here is the meaning behind the kalima, if you decipher it, you will be successful. So now we want to decipher it, okay? Now we want to decipher it. Now the kalima is made up of two parts. The, the first part of the kalima, la ilaha illallah, let's keep Muhammad Rasulullah, which is also part of the kalima, it's not complete without it, but let's keep it aside for a second, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But here, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha, there is no God, negation, illallah, affirmation. So what are we negating? We are negating the doing of all that appears in space-time. This is Allah's creation. Allah's creativity or creational activity. هَذَا خَلْقُ الله. Imam Ghazali says meaning هَذَا فِعْلُ الله. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one doing everything. Qudratullahi fi dhatihi, the qudra of Allah is in his essence. He's the one doing everything. 
Okay, it's very important to understand that. He's the one that's doing everything, but he's masking, he's covering this doing, okay, through mind, through the virtual reality headset. So now, infinite, uh, 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 eternal, our infinite and eternal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appears to us as space-time, but if you were to remove, this is why it doesn't usually, but if you were to remove the virtual reality headset, if there's no more mind, what is left? God. Bas Allah is left at that point. Okay? But this is the world of test. So here, this stays on until the angel of death comes. And it's not that, you know, that all of a sudden, you know, you're going to see, you know, Allah says, that we will remove the cover. What is the cover? The mind. But it doesn't mean that it's removed completely because you are not dying. You are tasting death. Very important. فَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ If it's pure death, then there's just God. But you're going to get a taste of it because you're just transitioning from dunya to barzakh where I believe a different type of headset entering a new dimension between akhira and between dunya. You're kind of in this, you know, barzakhi kind of glitchy place until you, you know, move on to the, 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 next, um, the next spot. So now, we want to negate, as part of the first kalima, all the, not negate doesn't mean like it's not there. It's very important to understand illusion means it's not what it appears to be. Because in reality, you can't say the world is the activity of God. Mind is God's activity. So when mind comes to a stop, God is revealed. Okay. And how, what are you doing with dhikr? You're silencing the mind ultimately. Okay. So the more silence the mind, the more these realities are manifest to you. Okay. This is very important. Now, we're negating the doing of the universe. The doing of all that appears phenomena in the space-time, we negate it, that it's not coming from there. This is not real. I'm negating, my eyes see that water is coming from the clouds. This is an illusion. Allah is the one bringing down rain. Okay. Whatever you see things coming from, it's not coming from there. This is just a mad. This is just the, the mask which is what? Mind, which is the virtual reality mindset, because you were created to be tested. So now the ruh views the world, views infinity as space, and views eternity as time. Okay, and that's the space-time, which is dunya. And that's the place of the test. And Allah did zina to zine for it, and He tweaked it in such a way where it's appealing because you're going to be tested. It's going to be very, it's going to be appealing because you're going to see it. It's like, oh, I know this person so I can get this done. And if I have money, I can buy what I need so I can solve my problems. Not at all. You're, on, you're, you're in a state of ghafla. You're not getting it. Okay. And we'll, we'll get to the point of what the point of these means and this phenomena is in a second. So now, the one name, listen carefully, the one name that, um, this is, um, you're not going to find this Anywhere. It's not written out there. Okay? I've, I've looked for this stuff in this way because in this time and age, what we know of science and mind and, you know, the, the matrix and artificial intelligence, in every time and age, Allah will open up new understandings. You are going to read the Qur'an differently. If you take in this perspective, the Qur'an will read differently. You're going to get it. Things are going to make a lot of sense. So bear with me here, okay? Now, the one name of Allah that unlocks all of Allah's other names. There's one name that unlocks all the other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the name of affirmation. This is the second part, which is you negate the doing of everything that manifests and appears in space-time. in Allah, and you affirm that Allah is the doer. So this affirmation in Allah, I want you to learn one thing. There is one name for God. 
It is the key to all of God's names because ultimately the world is really that appears to you is just a manifestation of all of God's names and attributes. So this one name is the key to all other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you bring conviction on this one name, it'll open up all of God's other names. Which name is this? Who can guess? Who can guess the name of God that is key and those that already watch me on Instagram live, who can say the name that opens up? Let's, let's, let's get some guesses here. Not Allahumma, no. What is not Ya Rabb? What is the name? Allah. Okay, Allah of course is the sum total of all the names. But what is the one name that will, if you have conviction on, will open all other names? Ar-Rahman, no. Al-Fatah, no. What is the one name? Al-Fatah, Allah, no. Let's see, Hayyu Aqayyum, no. Al-Ahad, no. Ilahi, no. Rahman Al-Rahim, no. Okay? There is one name, Al-Malik, no. Close. Zahir, uh, no. Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram, no. As Samad, we'll talk about Samad. It's linked to this one name later. Remember it. But no. Al Wahid, no. Al Amin, no. Al Ghafoor, no. We're at 111 people. We're at Tawheed. 111 people joining right now. 111. Drop to 107. Al Quddus, no. Al Wahab, no. Al Mujib, no. They're going to go through all the names. Al Wahid, no. Okay, Al Wahid. I don't know of Al Wahid. I know of Al Wahid. Yes, but the names are not limited to the 99. Al Ahad, no. Al Qahar, no. Al Ahad, no. Have we given up? Al Jabbar, no. Yahu, no. Al Hakim, no. Al Mulk, no. Al Ahad, no. Al Khaliq. Let's see who hits it first. Let's see. Al Mubin, no. Come on. Have we hit all 99? Allah, no. Al Rahim, no. What is the one name that's going to unlock all of God's names? All of God's names. This one, Al Karim, no. I give up. Why are you giving up so early? Al Rabb, no. What is the question? The one name that opens up. If you bring conviction on this one name, you will have conviction on all of God's names. No. Al Fard, no. Al Mateen, no. Al Ghani, no. Al Malik, no. Wow, it's a tough one, isn't it? Al Adl, no. Okay, Ya Allah, Akbar, Khaliq. We're getting close. Okay. Here we go, Al-Akhir. See if anybody gets it. Come on, come on, Al-Fatah, Al-Samad. I'll give you a hint now, I'll give you a hint. The one who is capable. The one who is able. Let's see, let's see if it comes up. Who's going to say it first? Let's see. Al-Qadir. And it goes to Abdus Salam Zuhair, mashallah. Al-Qadir. Al-Qadir is the key to opening up all other names. Why? Why is that the key? Because if you understand, Qadir is the one with the most powerful one, the one able, nothing limits him. He can do everything. He has the Qudra to do everything. Okay? So if he is Qadir, now let's see how it opens up all other names. Now let's take the name of Allah, Al Khaliq. Okay? Allah is the creator. So we say, Allah Qadir an Yakhluq. Allah is capable, able to create. Allah is able to sustain. Allah is able to prevent. Allah is able to give. Allah is able to honor. Allah is able to disgrace. Allah is able and yarfa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to give, is able, is able, is able, is able. All, every single name. If you believe that he's capable, you attach that word to every other name and you say Allah's Qadir ala an yakhlu, Qadir ala an yarfa, Qadir ala an yudhil, Qadir ala an yu'iz, Qadir an yamna, Qadir an yu'ti, Qadir an yuhyi, Qadir an yumit, Qadir an yamlu, Qadir an yakhlu. All of them. So it's the one name that opens up all the other names of what? All the other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's a problem. And I gave you a hint. What's the problem? The problem is that alone, without one of the other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can fall into shirk. Because you can say, Allah's Qadir to sustain me, Allah's Qadir to provide for me, but He also needs money. I, I still need to go work because, I mean, how is he, I mean, really, brothers, I mean, how is he really going to do it if I don't work? Okay, so now remember, but, 
negates, cancels what comes before it. So if you say Allah is qadir to sustain me, but I need to go work, you've canceled the, the, the one before it. You've committed shirk. Because does Allah need money? No. Does Allah need anything of this dunya? He's the creator of everything in this dunya. So does He need anything of this dunya? To create, to do, to provide, to give, to honor, to disgrace. Does He need any of the means that He made, that He designed, that He created? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can He be needy? He is, everything is in need of Him. But he is in need of no one. What is that name? What is that name that we have to add to Al-Qadir so we avoid shirk? Because if you believe that Allah can create but or can sustain but he needs, what does he need? Oh, money, oh, oh these are created things, they're phenomena. Okay, so he's in need of these things? As-Samad, absolutely. Zara, as-samad, as-samad, so your da'wah of tawheed has to be between the qudra and the samadiya. Allah can create, he's qadir to create and he needs nothing or no one to create. Allah is qadir to sustain and he needs nothing and no one to sustain. Everyone's going like, why do we work and why is there dunya and why is there asbab and why is there jobs and why are we going to school? Salaamu alaikum, let's go to sleep, game over. <laughs> it's like, we've gone nuts. No, you just have to understand the role of the phenomena. You have to understand why it's there. Allah doesn't need it. He doesn't need anything. He's self-subsisting. He doesn't anything, he doesn't need anything. He's the necessary being. He's wajibul wujudi wa masi wa hum afqood. He's the necessary being. He is Allah. Hu Allah. La ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. He is the one, the only. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. There we go. So this samadiyya ensures that you don't fall. I have no clue how I just got a mustache and. <laughs> <laughs> but this samadhiya ensures that you don't fall into shirk. This is the la ilaha part. Al-Qadir is illallah. As-Samad is la ilaha. So you have al-Samad al la ilaha illallah al-Qadir. So as-Samad la ilaha means Allah doesn't need money, doesn't need asbab, doesn't need pa doesn't need a human being, doesn't need the jinn, doesn't he doesn't need Israfil, he doesn't need Jibreel, he doesn't need the jinn, he doesn't need the heavens, he doesn't need the stars, he doesn't need you, he doesn't need me, he doesn't need anything. And everything and everyone is in utter and complete need of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's all between As-Samad la ilaha al-Qadir illallah. This is the play of la ilaha illallah. If you are between those two, all the other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open on you. Okay, so you have to dig deep and really study and understand what these names entail. Al-Qadir, the one most powerful one capable of doing everything. Maybe I should grow one of these mustaches. <laughs> what, by the way, I have no clue how to use TikTok. So somebody's like, why don't you send me flowers? I don't know how to send flowers. Now I'm getting TikTok hats. I'm getting like crowns, mashallah. I'm getting all sorts of things. So are these things really there? They're virtual. So just like you're placing these things on me in the same way, I know they're not really there. It's an illusion really, right? That's all it is. Just like this mind, this virtual headset, gives us the illusion of cause and effect and the phenomena, the world out there. But in reality, So now you have to ground yourself between these two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The name, the Qudratullah al-Qadir on the one hand, and we say that makhluq, cannot do anything on the other hand, فَقُدْرَةُ wa ajzul الْمَخْلُوقِ The power of Allah and the incapability of the creation. Okay? So between those two, Al-Qadir wa Samad, where are we between these two? Brother Usama, if you're telling me that Allah is doing it all, if you're telling me that Allah is doing it, it's very distracting, all these virtual realities. 
If you're telling me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one doing it all, He's the one controlling it all, right? He's the one behind it all. And the asbab, the created things, they're doing nothing because they're an illusion ultimately. They're just a vibration. In reality, they're not there. If, you take, if I take a cross-section of your skin and I put it under a microscope, what will I see? Blood? If I magnify it a thousand times, put it under an electron microscope. So molecules, eventually atoms, the nucleus, you, you keep the end. And then you get to the point of quantum and quarks and what happens when you keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in? They found something amazing. After zooming at a certain level, they found scientists. Guess what they found? Who can guess what did they find? When they zoomed in on these cells and they magnified and magnified and magnified, they kept seeing a world within a world. Allahu's Rabbul Alameen, a world within a world. Every time they magnify and their world had a, what did they find? Eventually someone got it. I saw it. Someone got it. Brother K, they found nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they found nothing. They found nothing. It's like an illusion. You know, the reality, because everything is a vibration. The world is a test. It's not really, it's not that it's, it's, it's not really there, but it's not what it appears to be. There's just God's attributes, His, his essence and His attributes. مَا فِي الْكَوْنِ إِلَّا ذَاتُ اللَّهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَأَفْعَالِهِ وَأَحْكَامِهِ سبحانه وتعالى. Imam Ghazali says all there is in reality is God's essence, His actions, His, his attributes, and His rulings. And everything is a manifestation of one of those four. That's it. And the essence contains it all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He tells the angel of death after the day of the resurrection, everything He commands, Yawmul Qiyamah, and everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends everything. Israfil is just sitting. His sole job since He was created. He has this trumpet. This trumpet is trillions of times the size of the universe he's just ready to blow and he's just sitting there all he's doing is waiting for god's command that's all he's doing he's just like just waiting for the amr of allah go israfil <clears throat> done everything except whoever was everything becomes nothing at that point تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارا وما هم بسكارا ولكن عذاب الله شديد. For those that understand that verse from Surah Al-Hajj. Now, Allah, he blew everything and then he comes and he said everything. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commands the angel of the death, death to end everything until all there is left is Allah and the angel of death. And then Allah says, who's left, O angel of death? He's just, yeah, Allah, just you and me. And then Allah looks at the angel, he says, Mut ya malak al -maut. He says, die, O angel of death. Who is left at that point? Allah calls out to the universe. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لمن الملك اليوم لله الواحد القهار. There's only one person to answer. Allah asks, to whom is the dominion kingdom today? No one is there to answer. Three times he calls out, no one's there. He's the questioner. He's the sole uh, uh, one that responds and replies. لله الواحد for Allah the one, the قهار. قَهَارٌ فَوْقَ قَاهِرٌ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ If Allah wishes, we'd all be nothing immediately. He is the one in full control. So in reality, there's only, oh, does Allah need angels? They're just part of the system. He doesn't need those angels to get, وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need angels to carry his arsh? حَاشَ وَكَلَّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anything. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The Prophet sallallahu said, أَكْثِرُوا أَفْضَلُ مَا قُلْتُ أَنَا وَالنَّبِيِّينَ مِنْ مِنْ قَبْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Close meaning to the effect of the hadith. The best that me and all prophets before me has said, the best of adhkar is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَقُولُ أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ قَوْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Make the mention of لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ repeatedly so you can understand, so you can decipher this world. 
because this world is meant to distract you. It's part of the test. You don't want to lose yourself in this world. You have to remember, find yourself. That's why he sent the messengers as a reminder. This is Allah is reminding us right after the purpose of our creation. I don't need any rizq from I don't because everybody's busy with provisions. Because they're not getting it. They're not getting it. So let's go back to it now. I'm going to see where I left off. <clears throat> if, I, if the voice becomes uh, uh, non-existent, let me know, because it means my uh, uh, road ran out of battery, which it will soon, and then I can switch to iPod, I, my iPods if, I, if I'm not done. So, so now it's like, but Brother Osama, I'm stuck between you know, Al-Qadir and Al-Samad. What do you mean I'm stuck? Meaning, well, if God's doing everything and all the created phenomena in reality is, you know, not doing anything, what's my relationship with all this? How do I fulfill my needs and solve my problems? The way to benefit from Al-Qadir, Al-Samad, the way to benefit from the one who's able to do everything and doesn't need anyone, and the, the way you will fulfill all your needs and solve all your problems, Allah. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says Iman and A'mal A'mal without Iman is a problem Because hypocrites had righteous deeds But they were hypocrites So you have to have Iman, Ikhlas And righteous deeds What's the opposite? You benefit from Allah through Iman مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever does, you know, righteous deeds, while he is a believer, we're going to give him a pure life. So the way to take from the treasures of Allah, the way to benefit from Allah, is through iman and a'mal. What is the opposite of iman and a'mal? Mulk and mal. The, the non-believers, they're attached to, they're running after, you know, the money, the fame. You have to be a real value man. You've got to be a high value individual, you know, a high value man. What's that? What, what is it? High value or top value? What's the word they're using right now in this space, right? They're saying you have to be a, a high value man. What's high value, Habibi? High value through money? That you have so much money? Your value is based on your iman and amal. Allah will take care of the rest. Because you'll know how to take from God's treasures. And I'm going to show you how. So now, what's happening? If with Iman and A'mal, Allah is with you. And if Allah is with you, you don't need anything else. All your needs are taken care of, your problems are solved. But if you're running after, you know, the, the, the dollar dollar, if you're running after the dollar bill, if you're all after the money and the show and the fame and the brands and dunya and the gold and the silver, and the, if you're attached to them, we're not against dunya and asbab, remember, but if you're attached to them and you're running after them, then Allah's help is not with you. In order for Allah's help to be with you, the base, the foundation has to be Iman and Amal. So without the encryption key to this matrix, you will perceive cause and effect in the things and objects of this world. You will perceive cause and effect in the things and objects of this world, so your heart will lean towards these things because you're going to be intoxicated. You're going to be drunk. You're going to... وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارًا وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارًا وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارًا وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارًا 
You're intoxicated, you're drunk, you're not seeing properly, you're not getting it, the nur of Iman hasn't entered your heart. All they know, all they know is this dunya and this world and they're running after it. They're running after the woman, the fame, the money. All this stuff, the, the dollars, the gold, the silver, the bitcoin, they're just distracted by these things of this dunya. So what are you saying, Usama? Leave all these things? No. What I'm saying is, with the help of shaitan and your ignorance, and your ignorance, if you don't have ilm and nur, you're ignorant, you're ignoring the truth, the one behind the many. So if you, with the help of shaitan, and he will use, why is it that the... The alim is more difficult. The, 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 it take, than the, the, a thousand, it's easier for shaitan to lead astray a thousand abids than one alim. Listen carefully. It's easier for shaitan to lead astray a thousand worshippers, a lot of dhikr, a lot of, but they don't get it. They don't have the perspective. They don't have the key. What I'm giving you now is the ilm, the nur. I'm sharing this with you so you have the right perspective. Now you're going to be much more difficult to shaitan because you get it. You get it. So what is happening with the help of shaitan and your ignorance, I mean you're ignoring the truth, or you're in a state of ghafla, which is the opposite of remembrance, awakening. So when you're in a state of ghafla, you will begin to believe what you see. Seeing becomes believing, but the state of the believer is We'll get to Salah later. First aspect of the God conscious, they believe in the unseen. But now you're in a state of ghafla, you're distracted, you don't get it, you don't have the nur of tawheed in your heart. So you look at the world and you the spell is cast. You're under the, the, the spell of shaitan and the nafs and your ego and you're running about this world without without purpose you're not getting it you're just like running after you just like your akhirah you need to make your akhirah you're running out of time which is an illusion ultimately but you're running out of it so you'll begin to believe that the means of this world can fulfill your needs and solve your problems because you're in a state of ghafla so to become this is what shaitan wants so to become awakened from so to become awakened to become awakened is there a way for me to plug this in so it doesn't die i'm not sure let's let's take it to the end so to become awakened from your state of ghafla you will need to remember the rabb which rabb who told you in the world of souls. You don't remember it. But he put us, he lined us all up and he said, Alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? Am I not your Rabb? Am I not the provider? Am I not the caretaker? Am I not the doer? And all of us said, Bala, indeed. Indeed. But that was the ruh. And so through dhikr, you want to awaken the beast. You want to wake up to this, this reminder, wait, Allah is my Rabb. This is not really what's happening. This is an illusion. Allah, there's only Allah. He's the one reality. He's the one doing everything. We said, yes, Ya Allah. This is achieved, this awakening through dhikr and mudhakara. 
Vikr and Mudhakara, which is what reminders these teachings and remembrance. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. You repeat akthiru min qawli la ilaha illallah. You constantly, your tongue is always fresh with the dhikr of la ilaha illallah. And you're listening to these teachings and slowly it, you, it becomes your station. Because now you are no longer ignorant. You are a alim in tawheed because you get it. And this is the strongest dhikr and the best of all is la ilaha illallah. So now reflection. We're going to take, we're going to reflect on something. If the means, this phenomena, listen carefully, this is the next, we're going to go a bit deeper. If the means of this world can't do anything and Allah doesn't need them, then why were they created? If he's qadir to do everything without these means, then why did he create? Let's see the answers. Why did Allah create the means of this world, the asbab of this world? Why the money, the gold, the silver, the rain, the sun, the moon, the galaxies, the star, the gravity? Why did Allah create it all? Why? Why? To do what? To do what? Why did Allah? Surah Al Kahf. Allah says, We made it to test you. It's a, it's a test. He doesn't need it. It's a test. It's all a test. The means are the test. He doesn't need them. Okay? They were created to test it. But how do you pass this test? I'm going to give you the three things that you must do to pass this test. If you don't do these things, you fail the test. You've got to pass all three in terms of the means of this dunya, the virtual reality mindset that you've got on, the phenomena, the you know eternity and infinity perceived as space and time, space-time, all of it. Three things you've got to do to pass the test. One... You have to negate the means so you don't get attached to or lean on or towards them. This is la ilaha illallah. You negate the means. They cannot do. They cannot help me. Allah is the doer. La ilaha. Money. La ilaha. Allah. Illallah. You know, uh, education. La ilaha. Illallah. Anything, whatever it is that is effect, my boss, la ilaha illallah, water, la ilaha illallah, medicine, la ilaha illallah, technology, la ilaha illallah, military, la ilaha illallah, all of it, negate it, negate it, negate it, vomit it, stick your fingers down your throat, that's where you let it all out, let it all out. We don't want any of it in our hearts. We want Allah, Allah says, who are the successful ones? The ones who come to Allah with a heart that is salim, that is khali of shirk, that doesn't have, hasn't associated any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one, you negate the means. La natayaqqanu ala al-asbab. One. We have no yaqeen, conviction on the asbab. Allah doesn't need them. Allah is qadir and Allah is samad. Otherwise, you'll lean towards them. Right? You'll become attached to them. So you negate them. One. Two. We don't la nukhalifu awamir Allahi fil asbab. We do, not, we, we do not break the commands of Allah that He placed in the asbab. Allah placed commands in these asbab. We don't break them. We don't go against them. Allah placed in these means because that's the very point of why Allah created them. He wants you to obey them. He put, you know, orders. We don't go to business to be successful businessmen. Also, why do you go to business? To fulfill God's commands that He placed in business. What do you mean? Don't cheat. Oh, you mean I can't cheat Him? No. What if I lose money? Doesn't matter. 
Just pass the test. Allah is the razaq. Just take care of it. Allah will Remember, Allah will be with you. Allah will be with you because now you get it. Don't worry about it. It's real. This is not fantasy. This is not fairy tales. This is what I'm sharing with you is haq, 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 haq. It's real. It's more real than, than you and me. It's haq because it's Qur'an. We're sharing directly from the Qur'an. At number three, you don't allow the means to distract you from Allah's command in the present moment. I'm busy in my business, brother, and I'm fulfilling God's commands in business. I'm working, and I'm, but it's time for salah. But I'm busy fulfilling God's commands that he placed in No Habibi. He says, The Egyptians sometimes will say, if you don't lie, you won't be able to make a living. You've got to lie to get around in this world, to make it in this world. Lie. And then the Prophet says, the truthful businessman will be resurrected with who? With the prophets. He will be with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Believe it? Because it's very hard to be honest in business. It's easy to stand up and pray two rak'ah salah. But it's very difficult not to cheat people in business. Very then, I'm in Egypt now. Subhanallah, beautiful country. But I've noticed, like, it, it's a habit. It's like, you tell, just, you know, lie to him and tell him this so he pays you on time. I say, why would I lie? Why would I need him this? Because well, we have yaqeen on asbab. Because asbab run the show, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a huge problem. So, now, clarification, another one. Negation doesn't mean leaving the means. Listen carefully. Listen, this is deep. Okay, I hope this happens before I lose the battery. Okay? Negation doesn't mean tarkul asbab. Okay? You have to understand the Jews before us, our cousins, the people of the book. Okay? Ghalu fil asbab. They overemphasized means, which led to riba, which led to usury, led to interest and all that. They overemphasized this bab and became very busy with it on the outside and relied on it internally. So they did ghulu, they overemphasized the means. Then the monks, the ruhban came from the Christian faith. Alhamdulillah, now it's all part of the same line. It's all from Allah ultimately, but it was finalized with Islam. We'll get into it some other day. But basically in Nadina in the Lail Islam, but we have to be respectful of all people and religions inshallah. Now here, you know, but we can agree to disagree. But here, the Christians, they left the asbab, the, the, the ruhban out of them. مَا كَتَبْنَاهَا عَلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I didn't ask them, though, but they did it. فَمَا رَعَوْهَا حَقَّ رِعَايَتِهَا They didn't give it its rightful due. So, so they left the asbab, and the Jews did what? They overemphasized the asbab. So what did Allah say do to solve the problem? He sent Ummatu Muhammad. He sent Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to hold the stick in the middle. فَأُمَّةُ مُحَمَّدٍ لَا يَتَعَلَّقُونَ بِالْأَسْبَابِ وَلَا يَتْرُكُوهَا The Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the followers of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are not attached to the asbab. They do not depend on the asbab. They don't rely on the asbab, but they don't leave the asbab either. What do they do? They fulfill God's commands in the asbab because they realize that's the test. If you decide not to get married, how will you complete your deen? So you don't, that marriage is a sabab, you don't leave it. Allah says, kulu washrabu, we'll get to that. So now, how, this is what is meant by, a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Allah is saying, we're telling Allah, give us the straight path, the path of those an'amta alayhim, the way of the prophets, the nabiyin, the siddiqin, the shuhada, those from, you know, the, the followers of tawheed and Islam, give us that way, Allah, guide us that path. The path where we don't rely on asbab, nor do we leave it. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ 
not unlike the maghdub alayhim in some of the tafsir, the Yahud, who overemphasize the asbab. Nor those in, in some of the tafsir, it says the dalin in some of the tafsir, they say it's the Christians, they left the asbab. Our way, ummatun wasata. Because we understand the purpose of asbab. We understand. If we understand the purpose of asbab, we know exactly what to do with it. We're back to 111, mashallah. Allahu Akbar. So here, so we need verse, so Allah sent the power. In this way, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they don't get attached to the means, nor do they leave them. This is ihdin as sirat al mustaqim. In fact, we seek God's means, but for a very different reason. We don't go to business to make money. We open businesses to fulfill God's commands in business. And if you're unable to do so, don't open a business. We go to our 9 to 5 to fulfill God's to commands in our 9 to 5 by not cheating, by putting in the work that we're paid for according to our contract, by being honest and working our best for our employer. But with what intention? With the intention of deen, because deen is a way of life. We seek the means Allah created to fulfill the commands Allah placed in them, because Allah says, <laughs> What's happening? Why do I have a lion on my. <laughs> I have no clue what's happening there, but we just had a. Okay, we can't hear. So I just. Did I just. Uh... Can you guys still hear me? Tell me if you can hear me. Wallahi, tell me if you can. No, Akhi, I am. My name means lion, actually. Usama does mean lion, but if you mean by that, you know, something else, we are just all slaves of Allah. You know, that's all. You can still hear me. So I just wanted to say before I run out of it, we're almost done here, because Allah teaches us why we take asbab. Allah says in the Quran, Kulu ashrabu wa tusrifu. Allah says, eat and drink. These are commands. But how do I eat and drink? Their asbab, their means, food and water. But Allah is teaching us why we take the means. In this small ayah, Kulu ashrabu wa la tusrifu. Does Allah need water to quench your thirst? Does Allah need food to satiate your hunger? Hasha wa kalla. So if Allah doesn't need these things, why did He create them? Wa la tusrifu. So that you fulfill God's command. What's the command He placed in eat and drink and food and water? Don't be extravagant. If you are wasting food and water, you are breaking, you are not. We don't eat to fulfill our hunger as believers. Mu'mins don't eat to satiate their hunger. They don't eat to quench their thirst. What do, why is it that we eat and drink? We eat and drink to fulfill God's and obey God's command, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we eat and drink as believers. This is it. So how, what is the command Allah placed in food and drink? Don't be extravagant and mashallah, go to Dubai, go to Qatar, go to Saudi Arabia, the amount of food that's being thrown every day out to, why is it that we don't have barakah? Why is it? Do you need to cook that much to show off that you are generous to your guests? Is this the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Rasulullah if he had some vinegar and bread, barley, sha'ir, he would serve it. He wouldn't be shy of it. Why are you shy of it? Whatever you have in your... You don't have to go over and about your, over your means, subhanAllah. So as slaves of Allah, we obey Him. His commands are in the means. They are in the means. Now, so do I need the means? Or do I need a'mal? We fulfill God's commands in the means. But I'm going to show you something. There's the way of asbab which is, let's go work. We got to work hard. Yeah, sure, work. But then there's the way of a'mal. The way and path to asbab, it's like narrow and there's a traffic jam because everyone is running after dunya. And Allah is saying, we're supposed to run towards Allah, rush towards Allah. We're rushing towards the asbab. So there's so much traffic. There's so much traffic. And if there's so much traffic, there's a traffic jam. Now let me show you. The way of a'mal is like the highway. 
Right? There's much less traffic. Get up in tahajjud to fulfill your needs. Get up in tahajjud to fulfill your needs. Man sarrahu an yubsata lahu fi rizqihi yaqulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man sarrahu an yubsata lahu fi rizqihi. Whoever wants to have baraka in his rizq. Wa yunsa'u lahu fi atharih. And have good health and long life and all these. Fal yasil rahimah. It's a amal. Allah, look at, but, uh, but it's usually illogical. It doesn't make logical sense. What does kinship and ties with my kinship and bir of my mother and father have to do with rizq? Because Allah has told you so and the Prophet told you so. Because we are people of ghaib. We don't follow logic. What is that in your hand, O Musa? Oh, it's a staff with benefits. Throw the benefits. Who throws benefits? Oh, it's a snake. Grab it. Who grabs a snake? It doesn't make any sense. We're not sensical people. We are people of taslim. We are people of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are people who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to His command. Even so, a'mal are based on tasdeeq of the unseen and it's illogical and you will need submission. You've already come to the understanding that God is there. Now you need to submit to His command. Now you need to submit to His command, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But asbab, they're logical illusions. So you have logical illusions. They're logical. I work, I make money, I buy my stuff, and yeah, life is good, mashallah. And then there is illogical, which is what? The way of a'mal. وَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ I was saying you make istighfar. Allah will give you money. Allah will give you children. Allah will give you... What does istighfar have to do with money and children? It doesn't make any logical sense. I'm telling you, don't leave Asbab, but I'm telling you, take the shortcut, take the highway without a lot of traffic. Most people are sleeping in the last third of the night. Why aren't people getting up in the last third of the night? Because they associated a'mal with akhirah, not dunya. They think salah is for akhirah. They think all these a'mal are just for akhirah. They solve the issues in your dunya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, umrun. He would rush towards Salah, any issue he'd have, he'd run towards Salah, Allahu Akbar, solve his problem through Salah. But you have to have yaqeen, you have to have conviction, you have to have iman. The staff of Musa, you know, the staff of Musa, this dunya has shahawat. The shahawat will put you in a state of hope and fear. And hope and fear will lead you to become attached to the things, because this is the sunnah of haya. Your job is to break the heart's attachment by replacing the hope in asbab with hope in Allah and the fear of asbab with fear of Allah. Hope in having money and fear of losing money, replace it with hope in Allah and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore you become attached to nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa was attached to his staff. Allah said, Alqiha ya Musa. Don't become attached to anyone but me subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope, inshallah, that was somewhat helpful. You understood, you know, Iman, how the world is, the matrix, the key to paradise, you know, the virtual reality mindset, what the, the world, the space-time, what it really is ultimately is infinite, you know, uh, infinite eternity, so to speak, which is just another way of, you know, describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's infinite and He's eternal, you know. So, so, but you know, th this world was there to test you, the role of means, how to pass the test of means, you know, to, you know, not, to, to the middle way, you know, as a believer, the way of an'amta alayhim, sirat al ladina al sirat al mustaqib, where we don't leave asbab and we don't rely on them, and we only rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope today was beneficial for you as it was for me. Can you help us understand where Allah is? Allah, Allah just is, sister. There's no space and time in reality. This is all dunya. There's just Allah. Ukhti. There's no time and space in reality. Allah created time and space to test us. It's the matrix. Allah is beyond time and space. You know, Zamakan is for us. Space time is for us. You know, alhamdulillah. Questions now. Anybody want to come up to ask some questions or post your questions, inshallah? 
uh, and I'll try to answer them. Wow, I'm surprised this uh, went through. Let me actually just check the time really. Okay, I'm actually late for a, um, a session that I have, so um, but it's okay. I'll make it up, inshallah, with a longer session for the sister. I do, uh, I offer through muslimhub.club. I have a Patreon, and in this Patreon, I have a s small group of people that I, you know, I try to mentor, and I share these teachings with them. They come to me with just, I try as a brother, as a companion, and as a friend, not as a teacher, not as a, you know, I don't like to think of myself as a sheikh. I'm, I'm, I'm a milk sheikh, not a sheikh. I'm not a milk, I'm not a sheikh, I'm a milkshake. I just, I'm just a da'iya, someone inviting. I try to focus on things that are outside of fiqh and matters. I leave those for the ulama to discuss. Um, but go to muslimhub.club, muslimhub.club. Join my Patreon for as little as $20 a month. You'll get on my private WhatsApp group. I haven't been active on that group for the last week or so because I've been traveling, but usually I'm active on it. And then there are some that they book sessions with me. Um, those cost money. If you can't afford them, just try to get on Patreon. If you can't afford Patreon, then you can utilize these free sessions. I try to make something for everyone. My book, The Afterlife Manual, you can buy it on muslimhub.club. Click on ebook, muslimhub.club forward slash ebook. It's just $20. If you can't afford it for whatever reason, write me to info at muslimhub.club and inshallah I will give you a free copy if you can't afford it. But you have to be honest with yourself and Allah. And if you can't afford it, because this is... Um, uh, my full-time work now and I'm working on edition two of the afterlife manual I'm very excited about what you heard today um, but in obviously you know uh, to the best of my ability I'll try to add more detail um, it will be included in it how can you give how to istiqama in doing good deeds Akhi, istiqama in good deeds you need good company you need to be part of something if you're not, we're, we, we spend so much money on So I did finally run out of battery, so I just uh, unplugged. Um, let me just grab. See how quickly. You hear me, please. Confirm that you can hear me. How did I gain my knowledge? Um, about close to 30 years of dawah, uh, going around the world, studying with scholars between Mecca and Medina, India, Pakistan. Um, I have some dear shuyukh to me in Medina that I um, sit with, but these are special. They're not your average shuyukh. These are people that sacrifice their time, their money, their families for the deen. I spent a lot of time with them, and uh, subhanAllah, they impact some of these things, but I just had a my own sort of twist to it uh, in a way that, you know, uh, the young generation can understand it. What Sheikh do you recommend we listen to? Uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, I'm a big fan of, um, huge fan of his. I think he's um, one of a kind. There are people that attack him and say all sorts of things about him. Give it a miss and just listen to him. He's really something, mashallah ta'ala. I, I really, and I'm not a Sufi I'm not a Salafi, I'm not a, I don't, I'm a Muslim. I stay away from all denominations and groups and all that. I'm just a Da'iya Muslim. I don't care you're Sunni, you're Shi'i, that's your business. I, I am Sunni, but, you know, I don't judge. That's your business. I, I just give the da'wah, take what you like from it, leave what you don't like. I stay away from all these things. I'm tired of them. It's just, for me, it's just, I'm, I don't have time for it. Uh, can you please review an Islamic video YouTube channel beyond the lot tree. I'll check it out, inshallah. Take a snapshot. But do you, what do you believe, Somali people? What do I believe, Somali people? Um, <laughs> I, I don't understand the question. 
Um, I, I've dealt, I believe they're incredible people. They've memorized, a lot of them are hufad of the, of Kitabullah. You know, they're incredible people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's good and bad in every culture, Akhi. You just look at the person. I don't like to look at their ethnic background. I look at every person and their, their, the way they are. Thanks for the let. Are we in a simulation? Yes, dunya is a simulation. It's a divine simulation. Uh, Shia, Sunni, it's all politics. Yes, absolutely. I need to ask you a question. Is insurance haram? Uh, ask a scholar. I stay away from fiqh. I'm here to teach you um, a new perspective on Iman. I'm, I'm not interested in fiqh, I'll be honest with you. I've studied it with scholars, but I'm not interested. I And I know the answers, but you can get them from scholars. Why we easily come back to bad things even though we knew that it's prohibited? Because your iman is weak, Habibi. Knowledge is not what makes you avoid haram and halal. It is the iman. It is the nur. How do you increase iman? Recitation of the Qur'an daily. Tahajjud. Uh, istighfar. Some type of dhikr. Daily sadaqah, even if it's a dollar a day. And dua. And a good company. All these will go a long way. Uh, any Islamic uh, studies you'd recommend? Yes. Whyislamistrue.com I recommend you go to that website and purchase it. It's worth every penny. Uh, whyislamistrue.com I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, Basira Education. So that to test us, you know, are, you know, are you going to seek strength uh, through means or through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Realize your weakness, Allah will give you from his strength. You think you're all tough and strong? You want to associate with God's name, Al-Qawi? You think you're strong? You, know, you will be tested severely. Always realize your true attributes and your, you know, just a weak, makhluq, creation, needy, you know, person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, you risk being arrogant. You want to be humble. Like Sultan al Uthaym, I don't know, and Muhammad al Duhaym. I, I don't get into it. I mean, inshallah, they're great people. Are you having a group? Yes, I have a group on WhatsApp. You have to join my Patreon. It's $20 a month. I, I have to make uh, a living through Asbab. That's my Asbab. Um, but um, like Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi he said, um, if you published a book called The Afterlife Manual, if you haven't read it, read it. Um, are we in the final time? We observe weather changing in Saudi. I, we're close. Not the final, because there's still the big signs. But we're getting there, Afi. Uh, Sheikh, Baddi atzawaj shoot and sahmi. Um, Sheikh, I want to get married. What do you advise? May Allah, this is a big fitna in our time. May Allah make it easy on our young generation. Um, inshallah, that needs a whole room, Akhi, and a whole time. What do I advise? A lot of istighfar. 10,000 a day. With that intention. 10,000 istighfars a day. Do that. Don't put in the work. Don't come to me and say, what advice do you give? Then you don't put it. Then you're like, 10,000 istighfar a day. With that intention, Ya Allah. I'm looking to get married to protect myself and my deen. The last, you know, ruk'atain is sa'atnain ibdam'atain. Two rak'ahs at 2 a.m. with two teardrops will solve any problem, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, 10,000, I have no clue what that is. Shukran, uh, okay, Akhi. May Allah reward you all for being here, for being patient with me, for listening. What is a good Qur'an translation for someone interested in Islam? Uh, get them to study Qur'an, but make sure they understand that um, it, it's, it's somewhat, a, it has some perennialist teachings in it, but overall it's, it's, a, it's a great translation for someone, or the clear Qur'an, that's also very good. But the study Qur'an gets a bit deeper. Um, I like it as long as you understand uh, like what perennialism is and you avoid it that you know you can be of any faith and enter paradise that's what we don't in the deen and Allah in Islam what do you think of the Muslim brothers um, uh, may Allah I, I don't speak politics I don't get involved and I'm not interested in politics 
uh, best Quran translations. Yes, the clear Quran is, is one of them. Thanks for the lecture. I need to ask you a question. Okay, I think I'm done with all the questions. Uh, for marriage, 10,000, wallah, it lots, but we'll give it a try. Well, I think it's a huge problem. It's like marriage has become a business. May Allah have mercy on us. How do I concentrate when I pray? It's very hard to concentrate on your wudu. You'll find concentration in your salah. Start with your wudu. Um, and uh, if the majority of your day, you're busy in amal and dhikr and things where you're mindful of Allah, you're going to come into your salah mindful of Allah. But if most of your day you're in a state of uh, ghafla, heedlessness, forgetfulness, then you're going to come into salah in a state of forgetfulness. But don't worry. You don't have to achieve khushur. You just have to struggle for it. As long as you put in the effort, inshallah ta'ala. Allah make it easy for you. Love you all. May Allah reward you. Uh, sorry for the long live. Jazakumullah khair for your patience. Do share this.